on because Pam run that house. I was like, you ain't touching on nothing. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> even even my Puerto Rican ex-wife was the same. Like, shit, I ain't touching on her neither. Well, these Puerto Ricans are crazy, man. <laughs> right? Oh, she would have beat the shit out of them. Yeah. No, they don't beat. They just cut you. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> hey, hey, later on, I got a great story about a Puerto Rican girlfriend I once had. Oh, Lord. Oh. <laughs> great story. <laughs> What up, what up? Welcome to Good Vibes Television. That's right, GVTV. I am one of three, actually one of four, but the fourth has decided to go boogie on another dance floor. So it's just this, these three right here. My name is RL, and to the right of me is Mr. DJ PRS1, yeah. better known as Regan. Regan. Uh, and we had, uh, we, I, it, we know she's a doctor, but Miss Alicia is here as well. Right. You guys can call right, Alicia so, or Dr. G as, you know, Dr. we're trying G. to... I like Dr. To, G. We're trying to segue into everybody calling it Dr. G. I like that. I like that. <laughs> so, uh, topic tonight is, uh, is is a hot dog really a sandwich and is we cereal really... We take really this stuff soup. seriously, folks. We, we do. We do. We take it's this stuff important. seriously. It's important. And how do you put your toilet paper roll in the bathroom? Exactly. Over or under. Uh, you over know, these under. Are, exactly. These, these are things that cause conflict conflict yeah. in people's household. Don't, don't Believe forget, it or not. do you peel the banana from the, 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 the stem end or the bottom end? Which is the right yeah. way? It is what it is. We want to get down to the bottom of all those interesting uh, topics, but... The main topic, <laughs> domestic, household domestics, mm-hmm. domestic abuse, domestic relationships. That's right. Uh, what, what did you say, uh, Doc? You said uh, uh, abuse of men. Ab- abuse of men. And uh, upbringing, the different upbringing. That's right. Yeah. The different upbringing in uh, far as um, culture. Um in our households for men and women, especially men, especially men. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, I'm not even going to kick this one off. I really don't. I, <laughs> I'll leave it to Doc, Doc, yeah. you got this one. Make, uh, make sure you guys light up on? the comments. You don't want me to get started. It's 2020. Make sure, I, make sure you all light up the comments. Our men are getting abused and we have to address this issue. You know? Well, that, especially that with <laughs> the fact that we are still in a pandemic, Mm-hmm. We still have people quarantined. We've had uh, the statistics are so high with the number of people that have lost their job. Um, spouses are now in that financial um, crunch. It's a lot of stress in a regular household that could possibly already have been stressed, you know, and you have mm-hmm. that dynamic going on right now in a house where. People, pensions run high, probably on an every hour, every minute, every day basis. And that is something that's very concerning, you know, the the mental health of um, just everyone in the house and how to deal with stress. And many, many, many people have no idea how to how to just decompress or how to deal with that in, you know, a a safe way because in actuality a lot of times people get mad and they get upset with each other and one domestic partner husband wife spouse whatever you want to call it they might walk out and leave they might go to a bar and have a couple drinks they might according to rl they might go see a side chick i don't know or side dude or whatever a side something and, they, and, might and that, and, for, they might go for a walk. They might go for a drive. They might, 
you know, call up a friend, go visit. So there are so many different avenues on a regular basis that someone can take. And Mm -hmm. now we are in a position where people are just really stuck still together um, at home. Uh, Of course, you know, here in the United States, we have lifted a lot of the constraints that we've had where we're not just homebound as such. You know, a lot of people are going back to work, but many people are still struggling. They're still struggling to make ends meet. And but we have places all over um, the world where people are still very much quarantined. And, you know, that domestic violence is just, it's on the rise. It's very, very concerning. And, you know, talking about it is just definitely one step. It's, it's just a step. But, you know, what can we do? How, how do we get to this point? And what, you know, what's out there? Because when someone's going through some type of domestic violence or some type of um, stressful situation, they may not know how to reach out or who to reach out or what are the resources out there. And there are a lot of people that are going through these situations now for the very first time. They could have been in a relationship for probably 10 years and, you know, they were completely fine. Maybe they had an argument here and there or whatever. Maybe they argued every day. But now it has gone to the point where people are putting their hands on each other. People are, it's to the point where we're having homicides taking place and this is really really sad it's disturbing and what disturbs me more than anything else more so it's the fact that a lot of these times there are children in the home witnessing what is going on Mm -hmm. that's where you know that's the concerning issue as well that Mm -hmm. Neither one of these parents are in a position to now protect that child and care for that child. But now this child is in harm's way mentally and physically. I I have something for you. Um, I have something for you, Alicia. Here in Baltimore, um, the uh, the domestic violence. Where is it? In Baltimore. 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 Yeah, B-A-L-D. Baltimore. B-A-L-D Baltimore. That's right, oh, Doug. Right. Doug. That's right. Zinc, all that good stuff. I gotta so, learn my thug language. Since since the pandemic started, um the the, the uh service calls for sexual violence, domestic abuse, um, and sex uh, um and human trafficking have been up three hundred percent here in Baltimore. Uh when the pandemic started. Uh, the uh, service uh, 24 hour hotline emergency uh, uh, service line for those individuals, uh, they stopped receiving a lot of calls and they were afraid that people um, thought they were closed and they weren't. So they had, you know, of course, the commercials out here and, uh, you know, radio and get the word out that we're still here. And um, their, their normal numbers, uh, they actually increased uh, up to 200 percent. Um, uh, once people realized that they were still open, uh, 2020 was an awful year. I, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly before the pandemic, you know, people would be able to get out the house. They would, uh, go to their side, check house, go to their side, do house, go to the bar, hang out of their homeboy house, hang out on the corner without, you know, uh, being harassed by, you know, other people who, you know, the mass police, uh, you know, unofficially and stuff like that, go out to the mall, go to the movies, hang out and, and do whatever it is that they could do because everything was open. Go out to eat. You go to a sports bar, whatever. Go to a friend's house, play spades, whatever. And of course, as you you, you mentioned, this past year, it's, it's, it's been taken from these individuals. So they don't have a, a um, place to go blow steam off, go relax. Uh, uh, even for those who were lying and said they had jobs, they was leaving the house every day, going over to their homeboy house, playing on the PS4, Xbox. But it was a, it was a way for them to leave home and uh, get out of her face. You know, she ain't in his ear and all that stuff or vice versa. And that's been taken away um, from these relationships. Uh, 
and even it's not just a, a heterosexual thing it's a, a homosexual thing too because uh the last month or so we've had several murders domestic uh, relationship domestic violence in turn resulted in murder and it was uh same sex relationships mm-hmm. people like you said people don't have a, a a way of getting out and just leaving a house you can't anymore um if you're responsible, when I, you have people who aren't responsible, they, they they're out the house. They don't care about COVID. They've been out the whole time. But we're talking about people, uh, uh, good people, you know, who are just, you know, they need that break from their partner. Their partner in them, they need they need time apart. And then not every relationship is like that, but there's a lot of good relationships that need a time out sometimes. You know, they're good people. I know things happen and, you know, we're quick to judge them and the way the, the media and the news uh, paint the picture of them. It, it's a, it's a, a horrible picture because of after, you know, it's an incident that occurred and it's right after that. But before then, these are good people who have just they just they cracked, you know, because they don't have a way to get out. And um, I was looking at the numbers and I was just I mean, I knew it was high. But 300 percent, that's ridiculous. That is that is really, really, really a big jump. And then you think about a lot of our young people are in relationships. And you said something before the show started. You have a lot of men out here um, who weren't brought up to be a man. They don't know what it takes to be a man. They don't know what you know what it is to be a man. And they get in these relationships and they think they're a man because they're in a relationship with a woman that they because they live with a woman. And because, you know, I pay this bill, you pay this bill. I'm a man. I'm I'm the man in the household. So, you know, when something comes up in their relationship that require um, adult attention, they don't know how to go about being an adult male. And some, it's frustrating, especially if you if you've never seen it, if you were never taught it, you know, and, and it's more so it's what you've seen, you know, because my father didn't teach me he didn't sit me down and say hey this is what you do to be a man he was the example you know exactly exactly and, that's, you, I, that, that, right, and that's, that's where you, you get it from is the example you just a lot of these people guys out here you know we always talk about this moment but um a lot of the father figure right now this new generation there's no father figures around there's no we have to as men now we have to reinvent the wheel again now this new generation of men we have to diligently go out there now and start raising our boys raising these guys teaching them chivalry they, a lot of them don't even know what the word means no not no. at all and, and, and how to value your queens you know it's, 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 it's one of those things it's embarrassing you know i, I have uh, i have two sons i have three sons but uh the two oldest is 16 and 15 and before uh they started dating i said hey look when you go over these young ladies houses and you meet you know, their parents, you know, you shake their hands, you look them in the, you look them in the face, you look them in the eye and everything is yes, no, or yes, sir, no, sir. And yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, all that good right. stuff. They said, you, you got and I, and, I, and I constantly tell them, so, you know, I get it. Y'all young men, you know, and their daughters are probably fast, just like you're fast. I said, but you got to understand you get caught in that house having sex with her. Dad is going to be a lot faster. Exactly. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> you got to, so it's, it's, I said, man, you know, it's, and I, you know, when I was a teenager, I never thought about these things like, oh, my sons, my, my daughters and stuff. And now I'm like mm-hmm. really concerned, mm-hmm. even though I've I've given them the best example I, I, I could give them and still trying to give them. But it's just it's so different today. Like, you know, we had to um, wait till one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning for some for some porn on cable and Cinemax. You know what I mean? Whereas they just log on the internet, type in Pornhub or magic8ball.com and they got it just like, oh, you can watch the WAP video. You can turn on the Cardi B video and you got ass and titty shake. Mm-hmm. You turn on, um, mm-hmm. uh, was it Cardi B one video? Nicki Minaj video. They, they having sex in the video. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So the, the, uh, where we were, we were just as sexual act, sexually active as they were. It's just that we didn't have the, the vision exposure yeah, they got the exposure and all that stuff and they got it so i'm like yo remember when you go out with this young lady open the door for her you know what i'm saying and i don't forget my 15 year old he was actually 14 at the time he said but well, why can't she open the door for me and i was like man because you can't she, <laughs> i just put my hand in the dog open the door for her, man open the door for her. you know i said you know you 
And, and the thing is, oh, hey, as, ain't broke. as he as pretty much as he was asking me, I was wondering, would she know the difference if he didn't open the door for her? Right. You, you know what I'm saying? It's like would she even realize, like, because this is yeah, just yeah, like when she realized, like, oh wow, what did I what what did you just do? You know what I mean? Like, like he yeah. didn't open the door for me. Would she if she realized? You know, he loses, he should lose a point, you know, and I, and I feel like that every man, if you did certain things, when you don't do them, you lose a point. If you sit down first at a table and y'all out to eat, you lose a point. Right. You know what I mean? If you don't um, break your neck to get out on the other side of the car to get her out the car, you know, safely and put her back in, you lose a point. Those things, you lose a point. If you, mm-hmm. you know, it's just certain things that. I really was into when I was younger because I always wanted to woo a woman. I wanted her to be impressed with my mannerism, me being a gentleman. And um, like, you know, when he said, well, why can't, why, can't, why can't you open the door for me? I looked, I wanted to smack the shit out of him. I'm like, yo, <laughs> don't get mad when you don't get no kiss at the end of the night. Because back in the day, to me, I, I never thought I was going to have sex on the first date. You know, as a man, you're always hoping. You're hoping. But if I played my cards right, I should at least get a kiss. And there was a few things, like I said, opening, and closing doors, um, uh, uh, the car, the walking. If if she was okay with it, hold her hand, lead the way. Um, she was no cold way to, to give me a jacket. Me. Yeah, things like that. You know what I'm saying? And and just just be a gentleman at the, end of the night when we parted ways. If I got a kiss, I felt like I did my part as a man. Mm-hmm. So as a gentleman, right. if I got some ass, I felt like I did my part as a man. You know, there was different different ways of going about it. Dude, right? What if you got nothing? There was levels to the shit. If I got if, nothing? Yeah, what if you got nothing? Then she, must, then she must not a douche, and she knew it, and her See, shit stank. So I like where this is. I like it, because now I can segue into... Going back to my point, you know, when when we're trying to raise these young men, a lot of what we are seeing now is a lack of patience from Mm -hmm. people with themselves and each other. Mm -hmm. We're seeing a lack of respect for themselves and each other and one another. We are seeing a lack of control and how to deal with the simplest of things from not getting their way, not being able to do what they want to do, but also what is happening in these households and in these relationships with uh, these (laughs) I am trying to have a serious conversation. I I, I don't know know what he did. In the screen. Yeah, what are you doing? This is what I lived with. Like for a long time, just weird stuff. And it's like, focus, man. Okay. Continue, Doc, because I was I so, was with you, and he just did his own thing. This is the kind of child you just don't even want in class at all. <laughs> <laughs> you better off be like, just turn off your screen, just turn off the mm-hmm. camera, do whatever you want. Oh Lord! And so. With regards to the patience level, and this is where we're at. These people are in relationships, they're in marriages, whatever the case may be, and they are becoming aggravated because Mm -hmm. they're aggravated at the situation. They're aggravated at the other person. They're aggravated that the other person is not doing enough for them because Yep. This is what's happening, and the tensions are running high. They've not learned how to deal with their own stress. Some of them are frustrated in themselves. With and just, me, you know, what am I going to do? How am I going to control that and deal with that? Besides walking out my house, storming out, and walking down the street and going somewhere, how can we deal with this? As first of all, as human beings. Because I'm sorry, we learn as children. We teach children this from very young. I remember going to my daughter's um, preschool, and there was a big box in like one corner 
and it was called the Intervention Corner. And they, if if children, I guess, and I had to question it. I'm like, what is this? And it was basically if they had a little bit of a disagreement. I don't know. Maybe they're fighting for the same book or a toy or I don't know a block. And they had to go into the intervention corner, and they would teach them to talk about it. What made them upset? What made them angry? But speak your words rather than yell it, scream it. You know, show it in like some type of other aggression. Um, I like that. And and these kids are learning this type of aggression from their parents, from their role models. And you guys just touched on this where, you know, it's like, RL, you're talking about, you know, showing your sons how to treat someone and how to treat a woman. But one thing I did not agree with, and this is the reason why I asked the question. Maybe that's why I'm here. I like to ask the tough question. So what happens then, you know, you go on the date, you're all, you know, everyone happy and all of that stuff but then at the end of the day comes around you've done everything right you've gotten all your checks check 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 stars all the way down Woo. and then she's like oh thank you for a very nice night let me know when you get home good night so I know. I, now, me- as, a, as a mother of a daughter i would teach my daughter to do that thank you <laughs> goodbye because if someone gets mad, and this not only goes for young men, like like your son, even my nephew who are now dating, this goes for guys of all ages. Because I've seen guys our age act like some teenage fools when they don't get their way, stomping around, you know, slamming stuff, not you know, just acting, just acting like a complete fool. And absolutely and absolutely that's the thing because when they do something they're expecting something in return well, i gotta and take my skull off never for this. be the case I got when it. you do something for your woman or when you do something for your man mm-hmm. you should not expect anything in return okay Okay, so check this out, Doctor Ruth. Do it out of the goodness of your heart, or just don't do it at all. So this is this this right here, and I learned not not from personal experience, but from listening to to uh, friends, colleagues, or just conversations uh, around me. Right, this is a two way street, and I I, I I talk to my sons about this. This is a two way street. Young ladies or women or, or however old you are. To avoid any situation at the end of the date, if you're not going planning on breakfast, you know, the next day, that should be known before the date. That should be known before the date, because we all have conversations with people on the phone. And sometimes, you know, women like to tease, they like to flirt. They like to offer too much information or information that is very misleading to some men. Right. You got to let him know. If this is a first date, this is a first date. Because you got some guys who, for instance, say if uh, we meet on Thursday, right? We meet Thursday, but we ain't planning to do anything till next weekend, next Friday. That is almost 10 days. So within them 10 days, you and I have talked on the phone probably a lot. We didn't send texts, all this. You didn't, hold on, I'll be right back. I got to go to the bathroom. And you got stupid men that's like, well, that's kind of personal. She told me she about to pull her pants down and, and go to the bathroom. She also said she was going to the bathroom. She didn't say she was going to use it like that. But that's just how stupid men are. Like she shared some personal information with. Her. You know what I mean? But you got almost seven to eight days, right? Yeah. So that Friday night, you go out. Now, what kind of date is it? Now, this, this is the part where a lot of people get a little carried away, especially men. Uh, if it's a first date, and I take you somewhere, or hopefully we're coordinating. We're talking about, well, what are you going to wear? Well, wh- where I'm taking you, it, 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 you know, it's pretty nice. You know, let's we're going to, have to dress up. So we're dressing up, okay? Which means this fool is planning to spend some money, okay? At the end of the dinner, if it tallies anywhere between two hundred 
the three hundred dollars. You miss don't don't think a high five is is going to be cool. <laughs> okay, now I mean, uh, and I'm being serious though. That's why it's important to have to have a conversation about the evening. Like I used to like, I mean, I was real smooth with. I'd be like, hey, look, you know, um, if it was some time in between, I'd be like, well, look, what do you want to do this weekend? And she'd be like, oh, I don't know. I said, like, how about this? Why don't we go out Friday night? Why don't we go to you know um, Virginia? Friday night, stay there till Sunday. If she say cool, then I know I'm getting some. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? That's real. Because I mean, we ain't sleeping in. T- I'm not getting a room with two beds, or we ain't getting two rooms. You see what I'm saying? But I'm letting her. If she say no, 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 that, that's that's just too much. How about just dinner? And I'm like, cool, that's whatever. You know, and she. But you just got to be a conversation. Because if you don't have the conversation, I'm picking you up. I'm taking you out to this restaurant for an evening right it's 250 to 300 dollars right now that's just dinner you know i'm i, I want dessert you know what i'm saying right. shit don't hug me i don't want to smell your perfume i'm trying to smell your i'm trying to smell your bedroom you should you have gotten dessert at the restaurant if you paid 200 and something dollars you should have gotten dessert in there no nah, man i want that i want i want that oyster you know what i mean but there's a that, <laughs> It's a conversation that has to be had. had. Yeah. And I because I remember, I remember, I mean, I had a couple of dates where those conversations were they were had and it didn't bother me. It didn't bother me at all. Like you let me know where you're coming from, and it made me want you even more. It made me respect you. And I think that's one of the things that a lot of women tend to forget. You you, you gotta make a man respect you. It doesn't have you can't make a man respect you at the end of the night. Bitch, I'm out of three hundred dollars. Respect my pockets first. <laughs> you got to make a man respect you before the date. Because once the date start, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's just like this roll. You like it's like a it's like a dude on the corner with his own boys. Yo, I'm I'm, I'm gonna roll these dice until I get it. Until I get it. Until I get it. After that check come, that's three hundred dollars. Shit, I should get it. I ain't see you. I, you look like you enjoyed your meal. Conversation was lovely. Sipping a bubbly, laughing and joking. I'm looking good. You looking good. Shit, it's time to get some. You don't Whoa. wait to the yeah. And, and, but you got and like I said, I always say this: men are so immature. That's why you got to lead us. You got to lead us, but you got to lead us uh, uh, <laughs> respectfully. Because if you give us any sign of a chance that we're gonna have a good time at the end of the night. I, we going to do it. I'll probably spend another hundred dollars, four hundred dollars at the goddamn restaurant. You know what I mean? But that's why I mean, that's why I say, you know, women got to learn how to make men respect them. You know what I'm saying? And that's well, just it's not just it. And, and and I agree with you. I, I, I totally agree with what you just said. Um, and yes, those conversations need to be had. They should be held. And and by all means, because, again, communication is. And that's what we're lacking. And we're lacking overall communication and even how to communicate. Because Mm -hmm. some people, both men and women, they do not have any idea of how to communicate with that other person. And there are some people that are just flat out difficult to communicate with, both men and women. So, you know, it, it almost intimidates someone at some point to communicate. And again, Rolling back to our topic at hand, these are the types of things, these expectations and what people think they should get out of something. And then when they don't get it, it causes it causes a reaction. And that reaction now is becoming violent. It's becoming deadly. It's just becoming something that it shouldn't. And we are not... You know, we we just have to find a way to to balance that out. Like people are just not, you know, going into their rooms and saying, you know what, I'm going to sit and meditate for about an hour. No, they're trying to throw something at someone or slam something or break something. And so this is where, you know, it's these sad situations. They really are. And and it is at the hands of both men and women. There are some. Women, and I don't want to say this to sound um, as if I'm not 
as if I don't care about the situation because I do. But there are some women that can really be antagonizing. And they can really, really just keep pushing a situation until someone gets to a breaking point. Ray Rice wife. <laughs> now, do I feel as if the outcome of it should happen? No, because again, it takes two. Mm -hmm. It takes two to, you know, to cause that. So just as some men can be ignorant and they can not be able to deal with their, you know, their emotions in the right way, there are women that are just the same, that can actually create a situation where it is really causing more harm than good. Yeah, and you know I agree with you wholeheartedly. Now mm -hmm. I want to say the same thing. I, uh, when I when I said what I said, uh, you know, about the conversation before the date. Uh, now, if you don't have that conversation with him, and at the end of the night, if he acts a fool, I'm not by no means saying that you deserve that ass whooping <laughs> that's going to be coming to you. I'm not saying that, you know. But I'm just saying, you know, when he can't say that you didn't tell him. You right. know, and it's, and it's just like, you know, he need to ask, uh, how do you feel about going to this restaurant? You know, um, don't worry about it, but I don't want to make you uncomfortable when we get there and you see the prices. You know, he also needs to be transparent with his with his plans for the evening as well, because it's like you said, you got a lot of people. They don't know how they, they don't know how to woo side. You know what I mean? Like, yo, it's, it's okay. I'm not, it's okay to be a disappointed at the end of a night of a date. Right. If you thought the date went well, it's okay to be disappointed, right? And this is, this is another trifling thing that I used to do too, okay? Just in case you ain't giving me some. Oh, Lord. I dropped your ass off and I went over shorty house to get some. So I was good. It, you know, I was good. Even though I spent $300 on your trifling ass, there's another trifling ass on the other side of town I that back. I knew. Yeah, that I can. She might not have been gorgeous, but I'm telling you, a chicken box and a half and a half was like ten dollars. I had a support cash. Yes, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. But yeah, you know, everybody need to be transparent. Everybody need to be transparent. You know, as far as the plans and relationship wise, you know, it's a little bit more deeper. You know, it's like what you said. We're stuck in a house, and I'm reading. Some of this stuff that's been in the news, and and I just I can't imagine. I mean, I've been in the house with my family, just like Regan's been in the house with his family. Mm -hmm. You know, I just I mean to to me, and I think Regan took the same approach too. To and he said it before. Well, get back to being being a family. Get back to hey, being close. It's healing you know, time. Yeah, you know, you yeah, we we getting on each other's nerves. It's getting to the point we yeah, all get on each other's nerves. And like, I can't but wait we, to get out. I can't wait to get out. But this, in uh, take it for what it is. This is the time. This is what we have to deal with. Make the best of it. Now is God. your chance to make memories with your kids that you couldn't do because you was out working all the time. You had to do this. You had to do that. Now you're forced to stay in the house. Make the memories. Play a board game together. Sit down. Play a PlayStation. The kids won't remember how much money you make. I swear they won't. They won't remember how much money you make. They won't remember that you put food on the table. What they do remember is all the fun stuff that you did together. And, and if, your woman if, if you doubt that, then think back on your own life and think about what do you remember about your parents? It was never, dad always had money. That's not what you would remember. You always remembered the moments you shared with him, the, the cool moments, the good things, the hey. We don't I remember this. like what our parents, like how much groceries cost. We don't care. Yeah. yeah. As kids, yeah. you don't care. It's like, right. oh, there's food. How much okay. gourmet cheese we ate? Uh, yeah. But we do remember, <laughs> yeah, and it's so true because what we look back at now, you know, that we're adults and we have our, you know, our own lives and, and children of our own, is the fact that what do we do as kids? What stood out? Right. Like I remember, my mom should. would just she would be the playful one in yes. the house, and we remember that. And and that was something that stood out. I mean, I never got to play a, a game because her and Regan were always playing. So I was like the spectator <laughs> of them playing whatever was going on. And I'm still that person because I still can't even play a video game to save my life. 
I was but, the backup king. I, I, we knew how to pack shit up fast before that. The, the, <laughs> <laughs> and my dad, just being the, 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 the disciplinarian, parent, disciplinarian yeah. was, you know, so it's, it's almost like you look at that and you, you can appreciate it now. And now, you know, we live in a different time. We work probably twice as hard <laughs> as our parents did. You're and, on there, but mom, mom is actually on here going, going, um, <laughs> Did you remember the Atari games we played? Dark Kevin. Yes, yes we remember Dark Kevin, Mom. <laughs> and you know what? This is what she would always tell me. And this happened for years. Yep. For years. She's yeah. like, let me show she's like Alicia, let me show you how to play it. I'll right. show you. And and her demonstration lasted about four hours. <laughs> <laughs> Did she get caught up in it? I would I would just get up and be like, oh okay, I, I I'll go like take a shower. Yeah. I'll come back and then they're her and Regan are playing something. But again, it's like it's that bonding time. That's what you and remember. I remember, remember her coming to my room and we would play card games together until I would have to wake her up every time it was her turn. She still does that. I start talking, she's like asleep. <laughs> <laughs> like a lullaby yep. so you know it, it's it's true it's true what what regan said our mm-hmm. children would not remember you know my That's child sit every day across the table from me because we are stuck at home doing school at home i mean we could go back to school yes because our governor would love that but i was fortunate enough to be able to uh, keep my position online, and so having her at home with me, it's like it's amazing. The win-win, to right? Have her there, and to be able to experience that, it's so it's just so cool. And it's like I see her, and I watch her grow and learn every day. And you know, it's important for our children to just grow up in a good, stress-free environment. And of course. Our lives will always have some sort of stresses and they would have stresses one day. But what is important is how we deal with that stress and how we we show them and right. how we teach them to deal with the pressure and the stress that they have to, to go through when it's their turn. Now, it's not mm-hmm. worse than when a, when a son, uh, any child, but when a... Um, uh, any you know gender child, but when, uh, mainly a male, when a son see his father uh, hit his mother, and you know he's oh, here to oh, conversation, or oh, vice, oh, vice versa, you know, but yeah, you know, but mainly I'm I'm, I'm stick with the men because right, you know, you you know as children you hear conversations and you're young you don't really understand the conversation you don't really understand what the, you know, what daddy and mommy is fighting or arguing about. Right. You see or the your level father. of frustration, right. Yeah. And you see your father, you know, hit your mother and the son, sometimes the son tend to take the side of, of dad, like, well, she shouldn't have done that. Or because he, in his mind is, well, daddy don't hit her all the time. He only hits mommy. Because. Yeah, because. And that is, that. that's how, you know, it, it, it spreads. That's where it starts. You know, he think it's okay to hit a woman, you know, and then you have, like you said, well, a young lady, you know, she think it's okay for a man to hit her, you know, Um, and that's not, you know, that's just, that's, that's, that's awful because no child experienced such trauma at that age because it's going to, it's, it's going to roll over to them later on in life, you know, and unfortunately you have a lot of teenagers in high school in relationships, uh, either being hit on or hitting somebody. And, you know, you meet their parents and you're like, holy shit. I see why. I see why. But their parents, they still don't get it. They don't get it. They don't see that his son hitting that man's daughter is wrong. Well, maybe if you wasn't raising her to be a whore. And it's like, oh, shit, this dude, you about to get your ass whooped. Because he don't, he, he, he still doesn't grasp it. See how wrong it is. Not just to hit a woman, but to lay your hands on another person because you're frustrated, because you didn't got angry with them, you know. And the son 
is looking at his father like, no, nah, my dad, yo, my dad been living here. What is my dad go to work? He pay the bills. He does this. When I want something, he get it for me. And, you know, my mom don't, you know, we don't play with my, my mom. Don't play with him either. And he leaves home and he thinks that's the way he's supposed to be in a relationship. You know, and that's just that's that's heartbreaking because, you know, somebody's going to kill you, sir. Somebody's yeah. going to kill you if it ain't if it ain't um, that young lady, because you have women fighting back. And the one thing in this in this country or the, around the world that is starting to change is that this the justice system is starting to support these women more. They should have been supportive, but they're doing it more. You know what I'm saying? You got women fighting back, fighting for their lives. And then they're the one going to jail. I ain't talking about just for the night. I'm talking about serving years. I can't think of the young lady name that uh, down in Florida who who gave what let off a warning shot. They locked the ass up. They locked her up for 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 a warning shot. She didn't even mm-hmm. shoot him. It was a warning shot. She she did like two three years before they decided to let her go. And it's like let me get this right. You know he was beating her. Beating her, he could have, he could have beat her to death. She let off a warning shot, and y'all lock her up for three years. You got people out here selling crack, whooping people ass, armed robbery, getting twelve to sixteen months, mm-hmm. months, months, <laughs> months. You know, and and so I'm I'm glad to see that it's the, the criminal justice system. system. is is getting behind our women more, but the community and and men ourselves. We need to to do more for it. Man, people, I, I mean, like, when I see it, I mean, I, I get involved. My wife can't stand it. You know, my, my, I, I'll get involved. You cannot disrespect the woman in front of me in public. I'm going to pull your ass up. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. if it means us, we're going to come to blows, then we're going to come to blows. But I'm not going to allow you to disrespect to disrespect a woman. I mean, if you, I mean, even, I'm not going to let you call her out. If I'm there, you're like, hey, yo, that don't fuck you, bitch. Like, yo, who the fuck are you talking to? Right. But you got a lot of men that will watch. You got a lot of men that will watch. And that's a problem. That is a big problem because I would want somebody to to look out for my daughter if I'm not there or my daughters. So I do the same for for the community or whoever, wherever I'm at. You know, we all speak a good one. uh, But, you know, when it comes down to it, a lot of people, I don't want to get involved. I don't want to get involved. And you talk about social media and the news outlets and stuff like that. What happened to the Me Too movement? You see, the Me Too movement was real big when you had all the celebrities on there. Me Too, hashtag Me Too. Yep. You got all these actors and actresses and, and these athletes. You know, Me Too, Me Too. It made a lot of fucking money. Yep. But for who? Right. Who? Man, there's people out there getting their ass doing the middle of that motherfucking commercial. Where'd that money go? Right. You know what I'm saying? Did it go to the House of Roof? Did it go to these other uh, um, programs that are supposed to be for domestic violence? You know, things like that. You know, the Me Too movement was something. It, I think it was more so uh, a social media conversation piece on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter because you hashtagged it. And a lot of my, a lot of people were hoping. I'm trying to stop cussing. I was supposed to stop cussing for Lent. It ain't working. Shit. <laughs> so... <laughs> So you got a lot of people who were hashtagging it, hoping that certain people, because if you hashtag it, certain people will see it, you know, and you'd be like, oh, it's my chance to get noticed. You right. Know, let me hashtag me too with a picture. And hopefully, I don't know, uh, Ellen DeGeneres, you know, like it. And and that's where we are with, with world events today. We just want to be seen talking about it. We really don't want to do anything about it. We just want to be seen talking about it and hopefully we'll garner that respect that's supposed to come with it. And that's a problem. That's a problem. Everybody's like, hey, look at me. Look what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. But when they come down to the actual work, like I've actually been outside in the cold, me and my sons feeding the homeless. With You know what I'm saying? With our football program, we've done it several times. We did it with the baseball program. You know what I mean? It's things that it, it, I don't put that all over social. I mean, if someone take a picture we put on there, that's cool or whatever. But what is your makeup? Right. You know what I'm saying? As an individual, and that's the problem in our community, the makeup is very bad. Um, what people really and truly want, they're not 
really and truly going to do. They hope somebody else is going to do it for them and they'll piggyback off of somebody else's work. And uh, it's just truly sad. You know, that's where we are in 2021. You know, it's I, I can hashtag it. They People going to see it, think I'm a part of it. You know, I mean, come look at the Lance Armstrong shit. Them little bands he had about 10, 15 years ago. You can buy a band in 7-Eleven for a dollar. Ain't nobody know he ain't had no testicles. They just knew, man, this shit matched my shirt. Yep. Ain't nobody know it. Lance Armstrong, Lance Armstrong. And then all of a sudden he, you know, the little steroid shit and cheating and doping. And you know what I'm saying? They took the, what they do? They took the bracelets out. But if the bracelets were there to raise money for cancer, why would you take them out of 7-Eleven? Right. You know, we, we live in a fucked up world. I'm supposed to be stopped cussing for Lent and shit. This just not working, man. It's not working. I just want to, I just want to jump in here and just go off some of the comments. Um, if anybody just jumping on the Facebook right now, you're, you're, you're tuned into Good Vibes TV. Um, I got Ramon, my, uh, myself, PRS1, Reagan, and Dr. G down on the bottom. He, he, he oh. even pronounced his own name wrong. I, that's the part you understand, man. I was, yeah, right. I was like thinking that. I just did not want to say anything because... We, we don't know what to call him. I'm always call the him. critical one. He doesn't even know what to call me. He doesn't know right. what to call himself. I, I, got a couple, I got a couple of the comments I need to, 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 to jump in and say real quick. Um, Ms. Betran on here, she said, I guess that's how my ex-husband learned. Um, his father was an abusive man to both his mother and his stepmom, um, and she said the apple certainly didn't fall far. Hmm. Fortunately for her, she was one of those ones that fought back. She said, I cracked the bottle over her head, works every time. Said, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm glad you I'm glad you're not in that situation anymore as we try and we're you know we're grateful I for that. Um, what else do I have on here? I got Miss Laura Parker. Thanks for watching. You know, you're on here too. Um, Mike hey, McCoy, Miss Holly Gaiadine. You know, we got you know, we got our crew on here watching us. <laughs> uh Myrna Gaiadine. We got oh, of course Mikey. Mikey on here making his comments about um um that we can't put a price on Coochie unless she's a hooker. Um <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mikey. Yeah, okay. you're the cake man. He had a comment yeah, earlier about, about his date. Wait, wait, let me go back to this date comment. He said, my first date with my ex, I cooked her dinner. She must have liked it because she took me back to my bedroom. Mm. Hey, Mikey. Might have been a cupcake. Mm. You, gave, you gave her a cupcake, man. She might have moved it. <laughs> uh, he, 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 he can tell the truth. He, he know he roofied the shit out of her ass, man. <laughs> <laughs> Want to say a big shout out to Miss uh, uh, Judy Barron. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> good vibes we got about 10 more minutes left on on on, on and we were discussing um, basically domestic violence and you know so much the root causes but basically you know uh you know us men and, and and in this generation we need to start training our boys training our young men training our girls on how to be treated you know training our girls to fight back training our girls to call pop in the middle of the night so i could come to them and whoop that ass um <laughs> I got that, that I get my true, boys. Though. Hey Rome, we about to go. We gotta that, handle that, this that, shit. That is true, man. Like you think you look back to like uh I hear stories from my aunts I and my aunt and my mother. 25, 30, 40 years ago, you know, family was just so different. You know, yeah. If 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 the, the young lady in the family went out and she had a bad evening, it was nothing for her to call her brothers, her cousins, and her dad, and they were there. You know, now. I mean, I don't know if they're not calling or well, they're not coming, but, you know, I, I can't stress it enough to my daughter. Like, look, she got a, she got a good little boyfriend. I don't, I don't call him little because he's a little dude. He, I mean, I'm 42, so he's going to be little to me, you know. So she got a nice young man. She got a nice young man, you know. <laughs> but if, if, he, if he was to put his, his hands on him, I mean, my, my 15-year-old was taller than me. You know what I mean? I don't need to. I, I go get Jason and AJ. We on our way over there. Right. You know what I'm saying? I, I ain't got nothing. To, I, look, I ain't no problem with whooping somebody's ass. And I think a lot of times people. But a lot of women, a lot of women, to piggyback off you said, well, a lot of women get embarrassed. That's probably why they don't call. They're embarrassed of the situation. 
sometimes they blame themselves. Well, well, I did do such and such. No, you didn't. He had no right. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's you one of the embarrassed when you got I that black eye. Yeah, hey, no, you know, that's that when you embarrassed, you know, because right. you didn't pick up the phone and, and call. Right. It's easy. It's easy. it's even like, you know, like like um sexual assault. You know, a lot of women still blame themselves. Well, maybe I shouldn't know what is. Maybe I shouldn't know uh Mm-mm. said this. Maybe I maybe I let him on, you know. Mm-mm. No, he gotta know to keep his shit in his pants. Yeah. She you walk but in, in that outfit that you wore, you walked past hundreds of men. Right. And they didn't attack you. It's that one asshole. You know what right. I mean? I'm sorry, right. I tell you, I, Man, I done told my daughter straight up, man. I told my, I said, let, if someone sexually assault you, let me tell you, tell, tell that motherfucker get ready because I'm going to sexually assault him. He going to get all this. Yeah, I don't give a, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I seen movies, man. I'm telling you, man, I'll get a broom. I'll get a broom and I ain't put no vest. I'm going to have my boys tie his ass down to a table. I'm, gonna put, I'm, trying, I'm trying to put that broom, or I'm trying to put it through his fucking throat, from his ass to his throat. You, you know, and, but you, and, and it's crazy to say, it's need to be done, but I'm telling you, and here up here in Maryland and Baltimore City, we don't we, we haven't had um because the death when you penalty. get locked up, how much time do you get? Yeah, we haven't had the death penalty Months. in over 20 years. Months. And 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 the shit is just ridiculous. The murder, the we we had a whole pandemic and still went over 300 murders last year. How was that possible? How? Because they they ain't got nothing to fit. Right. They ain't got nothing to fear, man. I'm gonna go to jail. I'm gonna get a. I'm gonna get a good lawyer. I'm gonna, that's that's the only thing. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the like education you pay for. Yeah. Ain't so no. you get a good lawyer. You pay. You pay whatever you pay. You to murder two, three people. You got eight to ten years. Hmm. What? That's crazy. Yeah. That is crazy. Yeah. You know. So. But yeah. But, but but you attempt and you miss and you get longer time. You get 20 years. Ain't that some shit? You get punished for fucking up the shot. (laughs) Well, maybe that's why they go to Baltimore and do that. Because if they do that in Florida, (laughs) it's a whole different story. But hey, I got always, shit going for some on. reason, the law, you always get more for attempted murder than (laughs) if you actually murdered the person. It's crazy. You know what I mean? It's it's just like a relationship. You know what I'm saying? You if you get caught flirting or or sexting, she you want to she get a divorce. But if you actually get caught cheating. We go to marriage council and we work it out. I right. don't know what marriage you've been in, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, buddy. <laughs> Maybe uh-huh. again in Baltimore they do that. <laughs> Baltimore, there you go. You said it right. But you see, mar- marriage counseling works <laughs> if both parties are going for the right reasons. Um, because, like for, for for example, some some counseling. If 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 I'm going in, I was like, yeah, we go to need to go to counseling. Because she needs to really get the counseling, but I'm gonna just go, you know. Oh yeah. No, it, it, you gotta go. <laughs> and this is the this is the key to counseling because it, it it works for me. It works for you know me and my wife. But the key to counseling is don't go for her. Don't go for your marriage. Go to fix you, motherfucker. That you need to fix yourself. If you go in there with that mindset that what I need to go in there to see what I do. How do I get this fixed? How do I be a better husband? Or, 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 or you know a better wife or whatever that's when it works when it works best when you fix it yourself she fixes herself then you try to fix the marriage you know you understand what i'm saying it's one of those things you can't go in now nah. because when you I'm start hearing you stuff about that, yourself like, we ain't here to talk about me she don't want that messed up you know what I mean? I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad i'm i'm you know what though I'm glad you put that out there about marriage counseling you go you need to work you go you need to find a you know you need to work on yourself because my thing is, when I take my car to the dealership to get fixed, it's just my car. I don't need to be getting fixed. So, I mean, that's how it works for me, you know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, shit, man. I look, man. I... <laughs> and this is why he on the show. <laughs> I, hope, I, hope, I hope my wife don't leave me, you know, because, I mean, my, my, as you see, my, I'm a handful, man. I'm a handful. If we needed to go to counseling, I would definitely go. And I'm I'm like what you said. You got to go to, you know, you got to want to do it. And you got to want to figure out what's going on with you because, you know, it's two people. How the fuck you go to fix somebody else? Man, you can do that shit at home, man. That shit, obviously, that shit ain't work if you in counseling. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> like, Doc, you better get it. Stop. He goes to the, he goes to the council. You start telling all kinds of shit. You know she cooked dinner after six o'clock. Who the fuck want to eat after six o'clock? 
You know? <laughs> just start telling, man. You know what I'm saying? Wasting your money. What you? Well, what, what? You know? You know? You know what I do wrong? You know what I do wrong, uh, uh, ma'am? That's what I do wrong. I care too much. Right, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the, get the hell out of here. Oh, man. my God. I'm done. I'm no, done. the best I'm... one. You know what's the mistake I made? I married her. That was yeah, 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 yeah. the biggest mistake I made. So, so what yes. fault are you taking the whole thing? I, man, I'm a, I'm a nice yes. guy. My mom, yes. my first up was I married her. Yes, yes. That's <laughs> I tried right. to do a good deed. By getting, you know, putting in a house, putting a roof over her head. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, you guys yep. are so cool. I am a product of a failed marriage council. Uh-huh. So, well, I mean, so have I. So have I. So have I. Yeah, so have I. You know, that's why I'm on my second marriage, you know. Obviously. And I'm, I mean, with, I'm with Ramon on that one. That's why I'm on my second marriage. And <laughs> I realized, and from personal experience, I realized um, to fix the second, you know, when when I was, in my in my marriage now to fix it, I didn't go for 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 my wife. I didn't go for that. I went because I needed to to find out for myself what do I need to do to be a better husband. You know what? Where am I messing up? And that was my purpose for going. I didn't honestly. I really didn't care about if she needed counseling or not. That wasn't the gist of it. Well, later on in the conversation, she she finds out I was at going to counseling. She goes, "So can I go?" Sure, <laughs> but I, I didn't ask you to come. I'm I'm just going for me, and it worked. That worked for us, you know. It, it she went, she did with her. I was I was a little bit upset because I'm sitting out outside, outside my session, having to wait the whole time, and then they come out, and I was like, I ain't get no session. Yeah, she just took up my whole time. What what? <laughs> you know, I, I felt a little disappointed. <laughs> like, wait a minute, I don't. Took my whole day to come here to do my counseling, and she took over my session. (laughs) I'm sitting outside. They talking in the room. I'm like, what the hell are they saying in there, man? (laughs) They talk about your ass. Right. People go to to counseling. Like, my, my, uh, my ex was the person that, of course, wanted for us to go to counseling. So you can be repaired. it, It was to repair Alicia. Yes. Because, you know, she has just fallen off the deep end and mm. just blaming me for things. Yep. Now I now I know what her brother was talking about. Mm. <laughs> so, how, how, long, how long did y'all go? How long did y'all go? We I went mean, for a long time. We were in um we actually went to counseling for a year. Shit. <laughs> a year. It took y'all a year to figure out it was fucked up. No, I knew that was the case even before we went. And I mean, <laughs> during, <laughs> and during the entire counseling session, I, I'm sometimes sitting there going, why are we even here? Because we have just literally regurgitated this problem. And I'm walking out of here with zero solution. But now I'm even more annoyed. Because now you recreated this problem again in my mind. Yeah, yeah. I guess. So, you know, but I'm not, it, it's not even about, so we had this thing in counseling where they had a hula hoop. And every time you decided to try and blame the other person, um, you they would kind of like lift the hula hoop. And you're like, you have to like put that circle around yourself. It's, it's about you. What ah. did you do? What was your um it was so funny how <laughs> my ex always found a way to spin that hula hoop as to well well I was really confused by what she wanted. Really? I don't need uh, a hula hoop, it was for her. <laughs> exactly. It was, it was girls need hula hoops. Yeah. It was all about yes. It was all about fixing me, and obviously that did not work. Mm. Let me let me jump into the comments real quick. Um, so because I'm because the comments are lit real, real, right now. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Betran, Miss Betran comes on. She says, "I I I come from five generations of loony, lol. All the women on my mom's side are absolutely certifiable, and the men." <laughs> On my mom's side, no, not to play with any of us. So later on, uh, Miss Laura Parker, that's right, Miss uh, uh, Miss Betran. 
Mikey jumps on here and say, no to self. Don't make any lasagna for Miss Betrayal. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get in my shot. I swear, I swear you guys, you guys write, you have the best comments. We do the show, and sometimes we don't get a chance to look at the comments. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make it. I, I double. I try to do double task. I try to read the comments while we're in the show. But I go back later on, and even the comments after the show has aired, I, I go in and I see new comments added. And when I tell you, you guys make we we love reading these comments, man. This, this stuff is great. You know, I'm glad we reach out. Y'all didn't get just go. What is this? I'm looking at that. I'm glad when we don't see that. You guys are actually engaged in the conversations that we're having. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Um, so, you know, this. The, unfortunately, we can't be on forever, so we got to wrap it up. So I'll just go to my little spiel. Um, you know, my name is Reagan, Regan, DJ PRS. One guy. <laughs> they keep saying I say my name wrong. Um, I run Trinity Spice FM. Ramon and I, uh, uh, Ramon and I work together in, in <laughs> you know, this, this other crazy spot. The, the, you know, the, in, 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 the hop. In, in we just Baltimore. call it the hop. Yep, the hop. We work at the hop, the hop. right? So yeah. um, that's my other job. But uh, Trinity Spice FM, we got, you know, go check out the website, www.trinityspicefm1.com. Get some merch on there. Um, listen to this, the station. The station is for Caribbean soca music. It's basically for anybody. I mean, I've just had a, a American, total American reach out to me, and she... Um, in fact, we're, I'm supposed to be working with her pretty soon coming up um, for a big project. I'm, I'm I'm really looking forward to, and um, but she's um she's full American and just is in love with soca. Goes down in carnival and all that stuff, and it's it, it's it's real because of the vibe. It's a lot of positive vibes, a lot of good vibes. There's no fighting. You respect women, you respect men. You know, <laughs> it's those things. We just everybody's mutual, alcohol and fun. So um, um, you know, with that. You want to check out some of my stuff? Go on Trudy Spice FM. You know, you hit us on Alexa. Yeah, yeah. Any any platform really? Just look up Trudy Spice FM. You should be able to find me. Um, I'm here with my host Ramon, my other host, uh, Doctor G. Uh, Doctor G is a you know school teacher. I let her say some more. What you got, Doctor G? Go. What's going on? Uh, nothing much. Right. I'm doing like the countdown just to let you guys know I did get my first COVID vaccine. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, we I won't know. say how, but um, so so remote. I'm I, and I'm glad we're on the show because this is a difficulty I'm having. So I'm thinking to the point now to get my. I'm ready to get the first shot. I'm trying to go get the first shot. Hold and we've on. Spent, no, wait, wait, wait. We spent, the break. So apparently this the job is where, doesn't do anymore. This is where. So apparently the job doesn't do anymore. I get confused and I get lit. This dude. This see. This is the stuff. That causes violence. This boy mm-hmm. that I was born and raised with in a famous homeboy. You haven't gotten your shot yet. I can't. Where you work? <laughs> yes, you I, can't. Can't. I can't. Yeah, I'm you waiting. can. I'm, I'm ready and I'm waiting. Wait a minute, my dad's singing ain't plugged in. Hang on. So Stop. I'm waiting. Oh, I've now been we're waiting. All confused. He's and, all like confused. And now. the job is so confused. damn confusing. I'm thinking I'm gonna just go to the next CVS and get it because. I'm gonna pay some. I had. I probably had to pay money to get mine. How about we walk you to a CVS? There is one down the street. You could walk. Well, it, uh, the job was offering it, but now it's by appointments and shit. And and we yeah, fill out all the stuff. All, I waited it was, too long. It was, it was always by appointment. <laughs> I know. It's it not. I waited too long. I I, so, I just want. I didn't. I didn't want to die. Tomorrow for morning. It. Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. <laughs> Right. Was, I'm, I'm coming in early tomorrow morning. <laughs> before you leave, I'll walk you across to the Turner. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I won't say the name of the place. I'm going to walk you to the building so and we'll get you your first. There. And Please that was the thing. They're hold not doing his it there. hand, RL, and walk him there. Do not leave him until <laughs> you see they're the They're not doing it there Because anymore. he will turn around and probably leave. We, 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 we were told we, this morning they weren't doing it there anymore because myself and, you know, Miss J was going to go over there. But No kidding. They, they've only been doing it there uh, for the past two months. Yeah, but the past two months, I didn't want to be a, a guinea pig. <laughs> this boy. Right. Oh so, God. But I was ready to go get it, and I couldn't get it on Friday because of the weather. And then when I when I came in, they they told me. So when we went to get it, they told us, we well, you, you, you didn't have, you, you wasn't on the appointment thing because, yeah, apparently they're doing the walk-ins is what they told us. 
So it was one you of those things. I'm like, man, okay, here I'm, I'm ready. Disgrace. I can't get it now. We are not talking to you right now. <laughs> this is a disgrace. It's an outrage. I, I yes. cannot even. Here uh, anyway, that, yeah. Alicia, it's just me and you. It's just me and you. <laughs> We're going to, we're going to end the show. So hopefully I'll be ready by next week. Did you hear that? I didn't hear that. I don't know who that is. I can't. I can't even. <laughs> I, I honestly think, I think he lived somewhere in remote Florida because that's how he's acting. Confused. Mm, mm, Deliberately mm, confused. That's what you call that. Deliberate confusion. So yeah, Ramon, we got that. We'll do that in the morning. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. But, but, but I'll I, I find, I find out where it is and I'm, We'll go over there because, you know, a young lady last week, she right. literally was just giving a lunch break to somebody. And it was like, hey, have you had it? She's like, no. And she went and got it. You yeah, know, she didn't have an appointment. You ain't want to get that shit. What about the book, man? When you going on there? I'm trying to segue off of this shit. But anyway. I'm trying to segue. Hey, look, so don't worry about the book. Hey, good news is, um, so up here, they uh, have... Um, Said they were going to have sport, high school sports. Right. Um, also, also out of two million people, it's two million people up here in Maryland. I'm not sure if I said it last week. One point one million plus have got the vaccinations. Numbers here in Maryland have gone down. Wow. Dramatically. Wow. No thanks, thanks to thanks Regan, to but wow. Yeah. No thanks to Regan. Mm-hmm. So they want to thank. <laughs> you the reason why it ain't gone down lower. Yeah, you are like a super spreader. <laughs> Petri dish all on your own, just running around mm-hmm. and spreading it with your asymptomatic self. Probably. Yeah, you call me. Ridiculous. You call me. You I can't. Yeah, you get cold. You yeah. Oh my but, but it's it's working. I know a lot of people, uh, you know, they got the little conspiracy theories. It's working. It is working. It is working. It is working. Um, if you're scared, it's okay to be scared. Just uh don't be scared to make responsible decisions for you and your family you and your it. friends. Uh-huh. If well, you are scared, got... call RL. He will walk you to the <laughs> closest vaccination spot. As he, you know what you need to do. You need to record walking him like a kindergarten child. That's a HIPAA violation. You know what you want to mm-hmm. get? You want to shut your mouth with HIPAA. <laughs> All of a sudden, you care about the rules and the laws, but you out there <laughs> spreading COVID. Yeah, you made me sound like I'm a thug. <laughs> He's breaking <laughs> law. <laughs> hey, so so look, hey, that's that's all our time for Good Vibes Television. Uh, love and appreciate you guys for supporting for the last uh, what two plus years? Oh no, no, two plus seasons, something yeah. like that. But anyway, hey, tune in to us next week, and we'll hopefully by then Regan will have his shot. You know, so sad. Later, peace. Love y'all. We out. We out. Bye.